For most people, war is like a bad marriage. An unending affair of strife, bitterness, and glimmering moments of joy that serve only to prolong the suffering. But for Pyrrhus, fighting came as naturally as breathing. Following a war between Demetrius and the king of Egypt, Pyrrhus was sent to the desert kingdom as a hostage. Here, his luck finally returned. His many war stories made an impression on the Egyptian king, as did his ability to laugh off any insult thrown at him. With such a capable friend in his court, the king sensed an opportunity. He equipped Pyrrhus with a small army and the ships needed to transport it to Epirus, hoping to forge in him an ally on the Greek mainland. The prospect of retaking Epirus thrilled Pyrrhus, as did the chance to exploit the chaos in nearby Macedon to seize both realms for himself. At long last, the exiled king was returning home. Neoptolemus has set his guards on high alert. Let us seek out the weakest point in his defense and launch our attack there. hours again before Neoptolemus knows what hit him. must come to an end, lest Epirus be reduced to rubble. I am willing to share the throne with you, Pyrrhus, for the good of our people. We have retaken my old kingdom, but this is only the beginning. The time has come to expand our domain into Macedon. Dark tidings, your highness. It appears that your old friend Demetrius plans to take Macedon for himself. His armies will soon arrive from the east.
My lord, Macedon is divided among several factions. We could take advantage of these divisions and take them out one by one. Or we could ally with one of them against the other two. Bombes. 
share yet another throne and become supreme ruler of neither kingdom. Hi, sir. No, we will go into this war alone. I remain standing. I will fight right alongside you.
We have uncovered the plot by Neoptolemus to poison you. Apparently, he plans to take Epirus for himself. If information like this can leak so easily from his mind, then surely he does not inspire much loyalty in his subjects. Let us strike at him first. Give the people of Epirus a proper ruler to look up to. Poison, I shall do so with sword and spear. Epirus is mine, and mine alone.
is no more! I should have dealt with that honorless cur long ago!
bomb this. Shame that we had to reunite under circumstances such as this. Yet here you are, trying to claim a throne that is mine. You leave me no choice but to declare war.
by fighting my brother to notice the threat that you posed, Pyrrhus. I go to my end, but I expect you to rule well in my stead. Prowess in battle is impressive. That match I will give you, Pyrrhus. But this is not the end. The throne of Macedon will yet be mine.
Pompous. Pompous. Oklahoma. Pompous.
好了，好了，装备。that I underestimate. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I would have needed a ward for this land when I return to the east for the next campaign season anyway. Mm -hmm. I would allow Master It would have been booed out of the theater for his confusing, overlapping plotlines. Stories, after all, should be simple, straightforward, and with an entertaining hero to cheer for. All of the things that real politics lack. At the end of the war, Pyrrhus came to blows with his old master Demetrius. Each led their forces against the other, and, in what must have been an act of divine mischief, the two armies marched right past each other. As Demetrius raided across Epirus, a second army, commanded by his finest general, Pantacus, met Pyrrhus in battle. Pantacus challenged the Epirot king to a duel, and Pyrrhus accepted. With thousands of men watching and cheering for their leaders, the two commanders fought man against man. Swords clashed, shields buckled, and for a short while, the brutality of the war was distilled into the shapes of those men. Those two kingdoms personified. Pantaucus managed a single strike on Pyrrhus. But not long after, Pyrrhus wounded his opponent in the thigh and neck. Pantaucus was forced to retreat, and Pyrrhus claimed victory. His boldness earned him the nickname the Eagle. But his triumph proved hollow when the war ended in a stalemate. For all his efforts, Pyrrhus returned to Epirus empty-handed. <laughs>